In this tutorial, we're going to cover how to enter arrays into MATLAB, or matrices, since it is Matrix Laboratory. Um, I showed you a little earlier, let me come back in the command history here, that we could enter arrays like this. So I had a variable that said arrays, I'm actually just going to call it array, equals one, or open bracket, one comma two, semicolon three comma four, close bracket. In MATLAB, the bracket notation tells, uh, or at least, I'm sorry, the bracket notation tells MATLAB that this is the beginning of a matrix. The close bracket tells MATLAB this is the end of a matrix. So I'm just going to press enter. Uh, I'm going to press the up arrow to get my previous command from my command window, because if I just continue to press the up arrow, there we go. So I'll press escape. I'll get the last one. We'll call this array one. So array one equals one, two, three, four. And now let's talk about some of the pieces here. So the brackets encapsulate the entry of the, the array from right to left. Um, but we have one comma two. The comma breaks up the columns or it delineates between the columns. So a comma is a column delineator. A semicolon is a row delineator. So I have one comma two, first column, second column, semicolon, three comma four. All right. Now, I can also, again, I'm going to press the up arrow, call this array two. Instead of commas, I can use spaces to the same effect. So to delineate between columns, I can either use a comma or I can use a space. Again, I'm going to press the up arrow. I'm going to call this array three. I want my commas back because we're going to start where we were and I'm actually going to delete all of the last information so open bracket one comma two that's my first row then I'm going to press enter please note that these triangular brackets denote where we're entering information when I pressed enter there are no new triangular brackets that is because I used an open bracket and MATLAB measured or I'm sorry um, noted that I'm entering an array. I pressed return, so now I'm going down to the second row. So I'm going to say three comma four, close bracket, press enter, and now MATLAB has saved this as the same array, but this time array three, one, two in the first row, three, four in the second row. So this is to show you that again, commas are column delineators, semicolons are row delineators. Here, a space is a column delineator, <clears throat> delineator, the semicolon is a row delineator, but we can also just use a line return to delineate between rows. So commas or spaces for columns, semicolons or just a simple line return uh, for the other. So to wrap this up, we can say that array four spaces and a line. I don't know what just happened. Sorry. Let's clear. Uh, let's come back to our one, two, three. There we go. Now we have array one, array two, and array three back in our workspace. Um, and I would like to have array four. So let's just start from scratch because I don't know what happened. Array four equals one space two equals my keyboard's acting up line return three space four. And now we have all four ways to enter the same array using either a comma comma or a space to delineate between columns or a semicolon or a line return like down here to delineate between rows um, now this gets kind of messy kind of fast so let's let's talk about um, one more thing now array entry however it goes I mean we're gonna cover a few more methods in a minute but every single time I entered some piece of information, MATLAB kicked it back out. I entered some information, MATLAB kicked it back out. Okay, that's kind of a dirty way of outputting information. So I'm gonna type CLC and we're gonna talk about the difference or, or a different way to do this. So I'm gonna say, um, that's not what I want. I want my array one here, my array, array one entry. I press enter, it shows me what's being stored in array one. I'm gonna type the up arrow. This time at the end, I'm gonna place a semicolon. So that semicolon suppresses the output. Okay, this is the output of that command. Now also note that the semicolon inside of the brackets breaks up rows, but the semicolon at the end of the line suppresses the output. Now here's why that's important. So, <clears throat> um, you know what, let's wait, we'll save that to last. Let's just say that it's computationally inefficient to output every single, or at least display the output of every single command. Let's talk about a few other um, ways to enter arrays. 
So a, an array by its definition is a, a rectangular entity. But if we have a row vector where we only have one row, then we could say we want, and we'll call this row vec one since we did array one, row vec one, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, that's what we have. Now we can do this a different way. Inside of the brackets, instead of one, two, three, four, five, we can say one colon five. And this saves one, two, three, four, five. So you can see, uh, oops, I didn't call it row vec two. And let's get rid of row vec one so that we don't, yes, please. Row vec one, there we go. And now I've entered row vec two like this and row vec one as I did previously. And you can see that over here in the workspace, they store the exact same information. Now, the reason I show you this is the following, that if I'm stepping by one, one, two, three, four, five, I can just say one or the starting value colon the stop value. And that's very handy because sometimes I want like a tens array, which equals 10 colon 10 colon 50. So now I have a starting value, I have a stopping value, and I have a stepping value. The stepping value is just added. So I take my start and then I add 10 to get 20. And then I add 10 to get 30, add 10 to get 40, add 10 to get 50. We can do this with anything. We can have an evens array and here, I'm gonna add one more piece. If all we have is one dimension, we now no longer need the brackets. So we can say two colon, two colon, 10. And this will give me all of the even numbers between zero and 10. I can also say odds array. And this is where we're gonna cover another piece of new information. We start at one, we step by two, we go to 10, because I want all the odd numbers between one and 10. I had all the even numbers between one and 10. And here's how this works. One, step by two to three, step by two to five, step by two to seven, step by two to nine. And then what happens because two plus nine is 11. So what happens here? Well, this is where we actually have to stop about or stop and talk about the nomenclature. This is commonly referred to as the starting value, the stepping value and the ending value. But here's the issue. The ending value is a bit of a misnomer. This is a bit of a threshold. We add until we surpass the threshold and the value that surpasses the threshold just doesn't make our array. So we start at one, step by two to three, to five, to seven, to nine, to 11. So the 11 gets chopped off and we're done, okay? So this is how to automatically enter um, an array if it's a single row. Now, if it's a single column, then we can do the following. Let's say I wanna take my row vec one and turn it into a column vector. So I'm gonna say column vec one equals row vec one. And all I'm gonna do is add an apostrophe at the end. This computes the transpose of this matrix. And now I have row vec one equals one, two, three, four, five. For those of you unfamiliar with the transpose, the transpose is where we take a matrix. The first row of the transpose is the first column of the original matrix. The first column of the transpose is the first row of the original matrix, so on and so forth through all of the rows and columns. Now, I said that I would show you in the end why this semicolon was so important. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, let's type CLC. Over here, I have a lot of variable statements in my workspace. I'm gonna type clear, CLC again. Um, so here's, here's the deal. When a lot of you have used the sine function on your calculator in the past, and the sine function is probably the best way to illustrate or at least the best uh, metaphor um, for this conversation or analogy. Uh, that when you uh, use the sine function, you pass the sine function some information and you get some information back. In programming, that's pretty much how I'd like, I think it would be best for a lot of you to start thinking about this, that in programming, there are three parts. There's the information that goes in, there's something that happens inside, and there's the information that goes out. It's a lot like having a conversation with someone. When you're having a conversation, you hear something, you think about it, form a response, and then you communicate back. So the steps are, you hear it, you think about it and you form a response, you communicate back. Well, with your sine function, you say something like sine D, you pass it 90, and again, we wanted to say B and M equals, because we want to be specific. And here we have from right to left, we're passing some information, something's happening inside of the sine function, and we're getting it back as B and M. This is how we think about a lot of this. But from a programming standpoint, 
or at least let me finish that analogy. None of, most of you don't really care what's going on in the background when you press sign uh, on your calculator. You just care that it gives you the answer back. So you pass it information, you get the answer back. But there's a lot happening in the background. If we open up the sign D function, it's pretty long and pretty involved. Okay, but um, to that, following the end of that, the, the most computationally inefficient thing that this entire programming environment does, MATLAB, is provide information to you back to the command window. So the reason why it's a good idea to suppress outputs, and every program you write will ask you to suppress outputs because it is so computationally inefficient. Um, and so I'm going to give you one example. So I'm going to say tick, which starts a timer. Random. I'll explain what this means in a minute. I'm going to simulate uh, a, let's say, 80, comma, 10, comma, 1,000. We'll say 10,000 by 10,000 and then semicolon talk. Here's how this works. Not that, that. Tick is a function in MATLAB that starts a timer. Talk is a function in MATLAB that ends the timer. Random is a function that will generate a random data set. So we'll just say data equals random. It's going to be a normally distributed or some of you call this Gaussian like the bell curve the mean or the average is 80, the standard deviation is 10, this will be 10,000 rows and 10,000 columns. Let's actually do 1,000 and 1,000. It'll be more manageable for the sake of this example. So we're going to start a timer, we're going to end a timer. I'm going to do it without displaying all of the information. Actually, let's do it with. So the comma is a way of adding different commands on the same line. When we start writing programs, we won't have to do this anymore, but for this example, I just want you to pay attention. Um, so let's see how long it takes my computer to generate an array that's 1,000 rows and 1,000 columns. Yeah, 1.9 seconds. Now to a lot of you, 1.9 seconds isn't s so large a time that you don't care about losing it. But um, at first, I'm working on an extremely powerful computer. And second, uh, you will get to a point where you're starting to do things that they will become so intensive that it is a, a huge amount of time. And also, let's, talk, let's show this. So I'm going to press the up arrow. Okay, that second comma I'm going to replace with a semicolon. When this information was displayed back to the command window, that generation took 1.9 seconds. Now, it took 0 0.015 seconds. The most computationally inefficient thing that your computer does in this environment is give you information back in the command window. So you should, if at all possible, suppress the output using a semicolon at the end of a line. So that's arrays, that's the semicolon and the suppression. Um, next time, I think we're going to cover uh, strings as a different class of variable. So until next time.